from insanely large sandstone pyramids that will just blow your mind. Two extremely rich players that have basically beaten hardcore survival and even a few funny and unlucky hardcore moments along the way. I am the Derpy Bell and in this video I'll be showing some of the greatest achievements players have achieved in their hardcore playthroughs. In this video I'll mostly be focusing on ordinary players in the community and not potentially fake hardcore series YouTubers put out. I might do another video dedicated to those at some point though, because YouTubers do make some pretty cool things. For our first hardcore achievement however, Evoker1 has just finished their 256 by 256 sandstone pyramid, totaling a whopping 125,000 sandstone blocks. And just when you thought that was kind of crazy, he also has 96 Neverite blocks. And this isn't the only crazy build on his playthrough, but we'll feature those later on. We love a good excavation time lapse on this channel, so a hardcore land excavation will never disappoint. J301 spent over 7 hours digging out this hole for his build project. People kept asking what, why, what, what's the point, and he responded, well, I needed a bit more space, which is fair enough. A player by the name of Enough Lawyer went above and beyond on his survival hardcore playthrough, creating what has to be the largest iron farm in any active hardcore world right now. The farm generates a whopping 12,000 iron per hour, and that's roughly 200 a minute. And all of this done in hardcore. That is just blowing my mind. This player needs to buy a lottery ticket after this. Retus Maximus showing off his first mega base on his world. It took him over a week on and off to build and design. He has said that his next project will be to terraform the surrounding area, but it looks great already. Evoker 1 back again, this time with his mind-blowing fully functional 8-bit computer, built entirely in survival, and hardcore as you would have guessed by now. The computer design and redstone logic was originally from a player called Matt Bat Wings, something that was originally only ever made in a creative world, with world edit. But Evoker 1 took the challenge and attempted to recreate it in a hardcore survival world, and well yeah, he actually managed to put it off. Here are some of the stats. It uses over 25,000 redstone dust, 28,000 stone, 3,000 plus repeaters, and over 1,500 redstone lamps. Actually insane. Enjoy this collection of Aix 25's builds. His playthrough has just hit one year old, which is crazy because some of these builds look like they took multiple years. This has to be the prettiest ocean monument I've ever seen. It's a Japanese style that was built from the ground up. Frank Q, the player that created this, is 1,300 days into his hardcore playthrough, which is just so impressive. Quanton was jump scared into a new universe. This is beautiful, David DK55 has created this amazing building that also doubles as a guardian farm, and he's also on day 850 on his world, roughly 6 months since he first started. But that doesn't stop there, he also has a wither rose farm that produces an infinite supply of black dyes, as well as some more castle builds just dotted around his map for no reason. Phoenix Diluted created a world eater in hardcore. I've only ever seen it in creative or OP servers. Oh, and uh, if you're this far into the video and you haven't left a like or comment, I might have to make one of these and point it towards your builds. Only kidding, I'm a peaceful whale. Or am I? NonXX1 has created this mega base in his 11,000 day old world. Unfortunately, he did die a few months back, but this is still very impressive stuff. Apparently, he had to stop his nephew from falling down the stairs. I think we've all been there. 
and he forgot to pause the game and came back to a death screen. That's just so unlucky. But as you know, family should always come first. I think he deserves a medal. After more than a year of planning, Evoker 1 has finished his Christ the Redeemer statue completely in, well, you've probably guessed it by now. I've said it a few times, Hardcore Survival. I'll try, I'll try and stop saying it now. He used roughly 22,000 stone, 18,000 cobblestone, 15,000 stone bricks, and a total of 25,000 smooth sandstone. Actually blows my mind. Happy Rogue One is on day 2219 of his playthrough, and he's sharing the two of the bigger projects of his world. First off, we have this amazing ocean monument base that's even been terraformed quite nicely. And no, he didn't stop there because he also completely terraformed his end. Mind blowing stuff. I couldn't even do this in creative mode. Bone Remy filmed the moment he finished his 169 by 169 sandstone pyramid. He used a total of 60,000 sandstone blocks and he's actually turned this build into a storage room and that's a lot of storage and it's also a lot of room for activities. Calling this player rich would be an understatement. He has so many emeralds, he could start his own bank. Womba, the players whose world we're now looking at, has just hit day 5000, which is impressive within itself. He spent over 1000 hours on the world and has a lot of bills just dotted all over the place, including, and you're not gonna believe this, a 512 by 512 beacon that uses 263,000 emerald blocks. Just let that sink in. I'm praying that this guy does not lose his world. Pi Treso is 40 days in, and this is what he has created so far. It's pretty cute. <coughs> this hardcore playthrough lasted two hours, and that's a new record. Give this man a medal. Crypt Trainer has started this incredible ocean monument build and mole farm on day 300 of his world. He's now on day 1100 and this is what he's managed to create. If that wasn't crazy enough, he's also got a terraforming project and a castle build on the way too, just as a side project. You know you're doing crazy things when a castle is a side project. Mining Moron, who is 7,700 days in, has completely terraformed his Nether Fortress into this overgrown build for his Nether Hub. He managed to use an old snapshot bug to get water into the Nether, in case you're wondering. When Lightshin was first added into the game within a snapshot, it could place water in the Nether. It was really risky for him though to put this into a snapshot, especially one that was in Alpha. I feel like there's a common theme here. Hardcore players love to mess around with the Ocean Monument. Tenzin Joe's Xavier, and what a cool name by the way, has just finished his transformation of the monument. He's also one of the few people who provided a download link. The world is 1.5 gig though, but it's worth it. It just looks too good at night. Trailwind 1 finally finished the How Did We Get Here achievement. Ilya was sadly died and lost his 4 month hardcore world and this is a small tour of everything he built. There's some amazing things on this.
enough lawyer back again, this time showing off his extreme wealth in his recent vault build, which was finished on day 3603. He's also looking for any feedback if you guys have any suggestions. Oh wow, you made it this far into the video, so you must have really enjoyed it, right? Please make sure to leave a like and comment and make sure that you're subscribed. I have other videos on my channel that I think you'll definitely enjoy, especially my daily dose of Minecraft series. And as always, thank you guys for watching.